this is the second part of your very first wild camping experience trip and in this video we're going to talk about where to go and how to get there and basic things like like that now the conventional wisdom is that your first wild camp you camp in your back garden just so you get used to it well and that's not a bad idea to be honest because to be fair my first two or three wild camps were in my conservatory i never filmed them or anything i had the scarp too and it literally just fitted with the crossing poles to hold it all up it literally fitted in my conservatory and my first two or three camps we're in the conservatory with my old dog back then, Bess. And we basically camped in the conservatory. I took a flask in with hot water. Obviously, I didn't do any cooking or anything. I basically ate in the house. When it was time to go to bed, rather than going upstairs to bed, I took a flask of hot water and a cup and some tea bags and milk sugar, etc., into the tent in the conservatory and I think I did it over winter as well so it was it wasn't cold but it was cool there was no heating so <laughs> there was no rain because it was a conservatory um, so my first couple of camps you know were like that so to be fair I'm not going to knock if you want a camp in your back garden because I my first couple of camps with my dog and it was really not so much for me to see how I would get on, and it might have been a bit, but <laughs> I think it was more just to see how best would cope with being, you know, in, in a tent, to be honest. He's a big Jesse, really. He just doesn't want you to know it. I'm not going to get into the legalities of wild camping, where you can, where you can't. You know, there are other videos, and maybe that's something I can cover, you know, another time. But basically... You know, as long as you're above human habitation, off the beaten track, can't really be seen, uh, unlikely to get disturbed, you can wild camp, you know, within reason anywhere. Within reason anywhere. The important thing is, obviously, if someone comes along and, you know, asks you to move on, then just politely explain that you're just wild camping you're going to take everything with you would they mind if you stayed the night and left first thing the next morning and if they say yeah that's fine do that obviously if they insist that you move on then then move on and find somewhere else go a bit further up the hill or something the perceived wisdom these days is try and find somewhere not too far away from the car so that if you have a problem that you can easily you know get back to the car because i was quite nervous about wild camping yet yeah, because i pitched everything several times not really in the back garden but around cheddar and i pretty much tested everything I even walked where I was going to wild camp several times and indeed if you go back to my very very early videos of course now everyone is going on about the scarp like like it's the new messiah 10 <laughs> everyone's found the scarp recently but if you go back to my very first videos before I was camping I had the scarp you know, like I said, I, I was doing all this stuff years before everyone else was doing it better than I do it on YouTube. So I had the scarf because I wanted something lightweight. And like I said, for my first camp, I couldn't quite make up my mind whether I was going to take an MLD product, a scarf, the scarf, or the, or the staker. And in the end, I ended up taking, taking the staker. But then, like I said, MLD pretty much every other camp after that and i'm not sure whether i whether i ever camped in the scarp until later years i can't quite remember now we kind of like the scarps a lot well no we 
we kind of well you weren't around back then it was best was around in those early videos yeah i wonder what dog we're gonna have in the future when you're not with us anymore lassie eh? oh <laughs> lassie <laughs> strange to think isn't it really that we go we go wild camping with our dogs and they won't be there forever <laughs> Oh, let's see, you are a good girl, aren't you? Yeah, I know, it's another long video. They've all probably turned off and pissed off by now anyway, Lassie, so I really wouldn't worry about it too much. I think they get bored with they get They get bored with us. <laughs> They're more interested in all the other YouTubers. Where were we? Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> yeah, I know, you want to be on the video now, don't you? You think it's your turn now. Well, you didn't start wild camping until about 20... 14 or something like that did you you came around a little bit after so because I knew that I was quite nervous and <coughs> because I knew I was quite nervous and apprehensive about it and I've walked into the middle of Dartmoor and pitched the scarp I knew where I was going so I was confident with my equipment I was confident with getting there and I was confident with, you know, getting back the next day. So I did the opposite of what everyone suggests these days and that is rather than parking close to the car, I parked, <laughs> I parked, I camped <laughs> in the middle of that more which I know isn't exactly the middle of the Sahara Desert or something like that. But I think for your first wild camp, it's remote enough. And I deliberately camped in the middle of Dartmoor for one specific reason. And that is that I wouldn't chicken out. I deliberately walked as far away from the car as it was humanly possible within reason you know that i literally wouldn't get to a point of pitching the tent and then thinking oh, i can't do this packing everything up and walking 20 minutes back to the car you know i i literally wanted somewhere that was remote which removed almost all possibility of chickening out packing it in and, ru and running back to mummy <laughs> so that was why I chose you know that's why I chose the middle of Dartmoor because I did not want to be you know packing it in it was kind of like forcing myself to actually stay because like I said I do have less now but, you know, I do have this little bit of a homesickness thing. Um, and I, and, I, and I, I had that for a long time when I was camping. That's what, why for a long time I only did one night. And that's basically, you know, what I did. I just got the most expensive stuff that I could possibly find at that time. I played with it a lot, <laughs> talking about my equipment, I mean my camping equipment. So I knew it literally inside out before I went camping. And then I took it into the middle of Dartmoor, pitched up, watched the sun go down, and I had a very enjoyable first night camp. It was very enjoyable. And when I woke up the next morning, I actually felt quite sad to be having to pack up, you know, and and head and head back. And then a month later, I was out in the Trail Star. And then I think the month after that, I think I was in the Duo Med. Take it steady. You know, if you are new to it, you can camp near the car if you want to, that's fine. People will probably take the piss out of you for camping near the car, ignore them. Camp where you want to. The important thing is just to camp somewhere where it's quiet, remote, and you're not going to get disturbed, especially for your first camp, because you will be quite nervous that first camp, and you really don't want 
you know, to be looking over your shoulder every five minutes is someone coming along. And it's a really, really good idea to scout out a location beforehand like I did. Even if it is a remote location, and given that it was a remote location for me, I think that's extra important to know where it is, you know, and even if you, and even take a tent with you on a day walk, pitch it at that location, which I did, have a cup of tea, which I did. You go back to the very, very early videos and there's a picture of me, I'm oh, sorry, and there's a video with me, with Bess, my previous dog, but basically that's what I did. I just, I went into the middle of Dartmoor, pitched a tent, had a cup of tea, relaxed for an hour, packed up and then went back. So I literally practiced exactly a short of, you know, I didn't bother taking a sleeping bag or anything like that or the you know, air bed. I didn't do all that, but you know, short of the sleeping bag and the air bed and that type of thing, you know, I took the tent, my cup of tea and everything else like that with me went out there set everything up had my cup of tea packed everything up <laughs> pissed off back to the car and that gave me the confidence and the experience to go and do it for real just just buy your stuff you know you need your tent you need your pack you need your uh, you need a cooker preferably um you know a good sleeping bag a good mat if you've got a mat make sure it's warm enough you know check the check the check the the rating of, of the mat make sure it's warm enough so you don't get cold make sure your sleeping bag the comfort rating is a minimum of five degrees over the coldest that you could ever possi possibly encounter within several months of your camping trip I mean obviously if you're camping in the summer there's no point in getting a there's no point in getting a, a winter sleeping bag for the summer um, but you know you can probably get a sleeping bag or a quilt if you prefer but I would go sleeping bag first until, until, you, until you know what you're doing and you're more experienced I would go sleeping bag shelter sleeping bag mat pack cooker and that's it that's really all you need. Make sure you've got a first aid kit. First aid kit, basic repair kit. I've got videos on here, which nobody ever bothers to watch. You know, so there's information there. You know, probably when I, when I drop dead, <laughs> the channel will probably become super popular. <laughs> Tony's dead. Everybody watched Tony's videos. Take a towel. But you only need a light towel, you don't need a big... You probably don't even need anything like this. I mean, th this is this is what I take as a towel for general, general usage. And most of the time it's fine. You might want something, you know, that's that this, this type of size. That might benefit some of you. But you don't need much in the way of towels. Nighttime clothing. I do like to have liner socks, liner leggings, and a t-shirt, and and like a, a beanie hat for my head. And that's it. That, and that's the only spare clothing I I take really. So in the first part, we did getting ready for it, what to take, dealing with what to take, and then in this part. The preparing it so obviously do practice at home practice packing at home get a tent that's big enough don't get a tiny tiny teeny teeny tent first up that's something else that's probably worth mentioning don't get something that's so small that if you wake up the next morning you can't pack inside it because it's too small and if it's hammering it down with rain and you need to get going and you've got to get out of the tent to pack because your tent's too small and you get soaked. Yes, admittedly you're going home, so it won't matter if you get wet too much, but it'll just make everything less enjoyable for you. So I'd actually recommend if you could get a light-ish weight 
two person tent just for one of you two person tent which is really the the, the trail style was a two is a two person tarp the scarp that i bought was a two person version although to be fair the one the one man scarp is big the staker was a two person tent uh, mind you i had a dog as well so that kind of skewed my my thought processes you know as well um because i wanted to have enough room either in the porch or inside i hadn't really quite figured out what i where the dog was going to sleep at that time just go out and have fun i wouldn't go out in the middle of winter i wouldn't go out late autumn i you know probably your be the best time to go you know if you're able to time it is early spring I, I think my first camp was the middle of March you know so if you can go which effectively is late <laughs> it's like late winter isn't it but you know if you could go middle of March April sometime like that May maybe September October maybe very early November but like probably March, April, <laughs> if you put a time a time on it, when to do your first. March, April, September, October, you know, when the nights are long enough, but not too long. And then that gives you a chance to get to camp, set everything up before it's too dark. But then you haven't got like long nights of just daylight, not knowing what to do. And then you kind of got to get into your shelter so that you can relax and, and unwind and just do your in shelter stuff. <laughs> so those are probably quite good times to, you know, to go. Then you've got a good mix of daylight, but nighttime hours, because you are camping. You're not going for a day walk when you're outside your tent the entire time. You are actually going camping. And obviously the, if you go in the middle of summer when it's raging hot, then you might just spend most of your time sitting outside because it's too warm. And then by the time you got into the tent at like nine o'clock at night, you're going straight to sleep and then you haven't got any of the any of the benefits or enjoyments of actually being in the tent, you know, eating in in your tent and, and drinking your tea in your tent or whatever it is you're doing. So so those are probably quite good times to go. Plus the weather is reasonable. Um, it's not too hot, not too cold. So that's a few other thoughts for you on on that. I know, yeah, I, if you've got any comments or questions, post them below. I do try to answer everything. Sometimes I've been a bit slow answering some recently, but you know, I do try to answer everyone. <laughs> it's not as if I get a million comments that I can answer. So if you do have any comments or questions, drop them down below. <laughs> And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.